the new slow video magazine brought to you by Carter and Company Real Estate. Christy Carter with the new slow video magazine. I am sitting here with Paul Anderson, Sunsets at the Bluffs magazine. And this is an amazing magazine that brings the local residents together Beach and the Sunset Palisades area. We thought it would be great to get to know him better and the work that he does for our local community. Hi Paul. Hi Christy. It's great that you're able to come and visit the community here so thanks for coming. It's a pleasure to be here and you said you just got out of the water. That's right yeah that's one of the reasons I chose to publish a magazine for this community. It's the area where I surf so the magazine covers from Spyglass right through to through Sunset Palisades to the homes at the Bluffs. There are actually $5 million homes out there. Yeah, so I surf here and I just got out of the sea. There's a new swell and I've been surfing. What a life. Now, where are you from? Uh, so I'm originally from Wales in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I came here four years ago. I ended up staying and then uh, I needed to work. I had experience with magazines and writing and also to do with marketing and uh, you know helping businesses to, to prosper. This magazine was an ideal thing to do. So what kind of events do you cover in the magazine? So basically the magazine belongs to this community from Spyglass through to the Bluffs. People can have their homes featured and some people really like to show the inside of their homes and their neighbours are interested to see the inside. We feature people's pets, it's a pet walking district, I mean the main street Indio there running by the coast. People are meeting each other, the pets are meeting each other. Every month we feature a different pet. We feature people's athletic achievements. We have runners and we have dancers and tennis players. Um, each month, residents, they love the magazine. You know, they love to open it. They don't know what's, who's going to be in there. They get to learn more about their neighbors. And then we also do put on events. So we'll meet in somebody's home. Um, the residents, you know, come along. They get to know each other. I actually did introduce one neighbor to their next door neighbor in uh, one of these events they hadn't actually met. So our theme is turning neighborhoods into communities. I think what you're doing is amazing and it's so important to bring the local community together because often with social media and our busy lives, we become disjointed from the people around us. So tell me about your latest event. The last event was just last Saturday. We had Cars of Shell Beach. A number of the residents here, I mean, it's a high disposable income community. They have some very high quality cars. People brought their different vehicles along. Actually, the lovely couple in this house, the husband, helped organize the event. So we had a whole range. I don't know what the value of the cars in the in nearby parking lot was. Um, and somebody sponsored it with coffee and donuts and then some other parents brought their children along they didn't bring a car but they just brought themselves and then people start talking they start mixing and that's they really enjoy that and they've the feedback is great I've had residents say I'm hungry for community I have loads of emails from people saying how much they love the magazine how much it's helping the community in a sense it's, it's a privileged community on many fronts you know high quality homes I've been told by uh, one realtor that these are the best property retention value homes in San Luis Obispo County there is high disposal income there are lovely people the magazine works here because businesses actually do want to reach our residents it's a word-of-mouth community they recommend businesses to each other and um, we can help socially integrate a business into the community through the magazine you know they market themselves with an ad but we will do a feature article on a business I can invite businesses along where they get to meet residents. Nobody's signing anybody up in our social events. But people ask, you know, I mean, I had one lady walk through the door and before she got through, she was asked, you know, and what do you do? And actually, she's an interior designer. And the next response is, oh, you must meet my husband. Uh, he's an architect. And uh, those sort of things happen naturally. And that's the way businesses can benefit. And therefore, the community benefits because they all get the magazine. It's very high quality magazine. They all get it for free. 
delivered by US mail every month into their mailboxes. Um, so they get a high quality magazine. They can see their children in print. Their children can write articles. Hmm. And that can be really helpful when it comes to applying for college, you know, to show what they, the stuff that they've written. The magazine can really be owned by the community and I think they just get into the feel of how great this is. And then so businesses as well are getting to realise, hey, we can help this community. It's, it should be a win-win. I think that's fascinating, especially you moved here from another country yeah. and you're giving back in such a huge way and right. really supporting community involvement. The community have welcomed me uh, with open arms basically and I'm very grateful for that. I mean our magazine is touchy-feely, it's feel-good, we don't feature any controversy so I, I have to be, you know, I'm Mr. Nice Guy um, but it's quite nice being Mr. Nice Guy and when people see their children and their homes in print they, they, they love it so it's great. I've felt pretty much embraced by this community and of course being different with a British accent and stuff, that helps. Actually, last Saturday, I met a new couple at the um, Cars of Shell Beach and they took me to, they showed me their home. And then the wife is really into sort of British things. So she's got books on Prince Charles and uh, all the kings and queens. And I could say uh, my father was in what's called the Welsh Guards. He was on duty in Buckingham Palace the night the Prince Charles was born. And years later, um, my father was awarded in the Queen's birthday on his list. He was awarded, made a member of the British Empire. And Prince Charles gave him that honor at Cardiff Castle, where I come from. So my father was there when he was born and then received an honor. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know why Americans love all the stuff to do with kings and queens. History. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you could still have had uh, our queen as queen of the United States if you hadn't wanted rebelled. What's the biggest <laughs> difference between this area uh, and where you're from? Blue skies. <laughs> Blue skies. Um, where I lived, I could walk a mile and a half and I could find a stone well that was 1500 years old. Cardiff Castle, the foundations that were built by the Romans. Hmm. Family pub that's in my family. The locals there will point out and say the Romans massacred uh, local people in that field 2000 years ago. Now there obviously is a history here and that's the uh, history of the, would it be the Shumash Indians mm -hmm. here? Well and you're building a history with this magazine. That's right. Right, yes. And the magazine is great too, just because everything is online nowadays. It's nice to pick up a magazine yeah. and actually, and then to meet the people in it. That's right, and <laughs> this is one of the few forms of print media that isn't going away. Mm. I mean, I go into homes here, there's a lady just on the road, I went in and I thought I'll do this without telling her I'm coming to see if this is right, because most times I go into somebody's home, these magazines are on people's coffee tables. So I knocked the door and went in, she had two magazines open different magazines on her uh, kitchen top so this is print media that doesn't go away and they doesn't get trashed and but that's because you know it's friends people's their friends neighbors children all there so history. it's yeah it's mm. history and community um, in print you're not gonna find people looking up on laptops mm. that um, so it is one of the few bits of print media it isn't going away what do you think uh, the the dinosaur caves events that they have on Sundays, the farmer's market. How do you think that plays into the sense of community? I would split Shell Beach up into two areas. From Spyglass this way, it's basically owner occupied and that's the area the magazine goes for. The other side is some very high quality homes, but there's a lot of beach rentals and a lot of vacation homes. But in terms of businesses, people being aware of businesses, it's funny, I mean, there's a very well-known hotel just over the Ontario Ridge here. And we actually did a restaurant review at their restaurant. I took along residents, and, um, but they were saying to me, although we're very close, people don't know we're here. Um, and uh, obviously by, by the magazine, we, we featured them and they go into all the homes. That really helped, you know, and, and it helps to get residents to go there because our residents do have a good disposable income. I was actually in another uh, 
national chain restaurant in um, off Los Osos Road only earlier this week, I think. Mm. And again, I mean, I was able to point out, I didn't know they were there. And a lot of uh, our residents here aren't aware of what's around. We bring it to the fore. The magazine has been an ideal way of doing that. Which is really important in terms of getting the word out if you are a new business in San Luis Obispo or Pismo Beach and you want to let people know that you're open because a lot of times I will drive by a place and that's the first time that I heard about it. Yeah, I mean, a key thing for with what we can do for a business with the magazine is to integrate the business in to this community so that when somebody thinks, oh, I need a plumber, mm -hmm. you know, the plumber that is involved with our magazine, they've read about his family and his story in the feature article we did. They've met him uh, at one of the residence events or the other. So that the, the plumber is in their consideration set and when they need the, the, the plumber, it's it's there in the he's there in our, in their brain and um, I mean it always helps when we feature a business I always look to sort of make it uh, uh, catchy you know I recently featured a an attorney uh, she actually was woman attorney of the year for this county and we started off I think the first chapter was it started off with the pressure cooker exploded the effects this explosion had on the the lady that was holding it, uh, serious injuries. Um, hopefully somebody reading that would end up wanting to read the rest of the article and if, as they do they'd get to learn about the skills this attorney has. Actually it was a nationwide case to do with a lot of exploding pressure cookers. Breaking down the barriers and you're building the close connections and the personal touch that means so much to a lot of people, but we've lost touch with that, I think, over the years. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're a society that, you know, sometimes people don't know who their neighbor is. Um, they don't necessarily know much about the, a local business. And uh, yeah, bringing businesses and neighbors together in a relaxed way, they get to know each other. It does make a difference when somebody thinks, oh, you know, um, I need somebody to do my paving stones. If they've met that person, then that's uh, and they were impressed. I mean, I actually do have somebody in the magazine who does paving stones, and uh, we had a residence event. He plays in a pop group, and he gave CDs out. Everybody right. stayed afterwards listening to his CDs and getting to know him, and he, he really went down well, which is great the next time somebody's thinking they need a paver, you know. Well, and that's the, that's the building the close connections. Most important to me is combining business with people that we love and yeah. being of service, so yes. thank you. And we are here with a local resident who is a very good friend of Paul's. Linda, and she is going to share with us a little bit about what she loves about our community and the Sunset Magazine. Hi, Linda. Hi, Christy. I just happened to see this magazine on the coffee table. Today awful. is um, Mahjong at my house. It's a tile game, a Chinese tile game. It's really good for the brain because they change it all the time and then you have to learn new things. and good for the brain and if you win at the table everyone has to pay you a quarter or two if you draw it yourself. Tell me about your neighborhood when you moved here. We moved here seven years ago after 40 years out on acreage in Arroyo Grande with a horse. My horse had died and uh, we've had a boat in Avila for almost 50 years so we decided to move here and um, it's all about the view of course but um, we hadn't lived house to house for 40 years and we met all these neighbors because we've got, uh, we had three dogs when we first moved here, so walking dogs, everyone was laughing at one of our funny looking dogs and that's how we met everybody. We've had started having neighborhood parties and it's just been really fun. And then the magazine started having gatherings that brings people together and it's just been delightful. It's almost like family that we don't have, we don't have kids, so it's, it's been delightful. Now you taught for a good number of years and your husband did too. I taught for 36 years in Orchid and he taught in Lucia Mar and um, Compton, <coughs> kept him out of Vietnam. 
um, he taught, and then they we moved here, and they had him teach kindergarten and be the principal for seven years at Branch School in Arroyo Grande. So that was that was a, a lot. Bit. Yeah, but teaching's good. There's a lot of good things about it. You know, you have that certitude of you know how much money's coming in every month. You're not dependent on the economy or the weather. And uh, you get some time off, which is why we both decided to do that, because we started traveling the continent in the Volkswagen van with the rescue dog in the uh, early 70s and decided, how else can you get this much time off? So it was a good mix for us. This is like uh, hiking, biking, dog walking nirvana, you know? <laughs> I mean, we've got, we've got hills, we've got beaches we can walk to, uh, and in our view of the ocean, and like I say, we have a boat in Avila that my husband races, and um, it's just, uh, it's grown a lot. Population. How do you feel about the growth? <laughs> well, I wish it weren't here, but that's yes. the way it is, because why should I say nobody else should enjoy what I have, you know? So, uh, it's awesome. We grew up in Bakersfield, a wonderful place to grow up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now it's considered the dirtiest air in the country. And horses were my life. My sister has a horse rescue ranch there. Relationships with your neighbors, and that's what's most important. Yeah. Inga Keeler, she was driving away, and her daughter's dog got out of the driveway. She didn't realize it, and I saw the dog, and I kind of got the dog back to the house. And I hadn't met her yet, but then I did, and so we got to go to a, a garden potty. At, <laughs> she's from uh, Denmark, and um, it's another way have good neighbors, you know. This is Christy Carter with the new Slow Video Magazine.